So meet Martin. Martin is my almost 15-year-old shepherd. And while he is frequently a very good boy, um, he occasionally wants to take over the world and has some pretty extreme ideas about what is acceptable behavior. So Martin has decided that he wants to enter into the EdTech space. And he has rolled out this wonderful new suite called Martin's Unified Teaching and Testing Service, or MUTS for short. And in, in very common fashion, he has made his privacy policy long, difficult to read, uh, and in tiny print with a big I accept button. Um, he doesn't have thumbs, so he had to make it big, you know. Um, so let's look at some of these provisions and decide if on the day he wrote this, he was being a good dog or he was being a bad dog. So for starters, his definition of data. Student information only includes user information knowingly provided in the course of using this service. Well, this is a problem. Very much a bad dog provision. Uh, a better approach would have been to broaden that definition, saying only information knowingly collected. Uh, that excludes all sorts of things. So a better approach would have been student information includes all personally identifiable information and other non-public information. Student information includes, but is not limited to, information provided by or about students, metadata, and user content. So this has established a very broad definition of what is covered in the subsequent provisions of the agreement. So if he were being a good dog, this is what he would have included. All right, provisions about data use. Let's take a look. After use of MUTS services has begun and user has provided student information, MUTS may use student information for the following purposes. Operation of MUTS services in fulfillment of this agreement, okay. Targeted advertising and other business related purposes. So problematic here, targeted advertising. That's a big red flag. And other business related purposes, what on earth does that even mean? That could mean just about anything depending on what business you're in. So I would definitely, oh, I skipped one. There we go. Um, oh, there was a second provision, that's why. Uh, after, oh, we got that. There we go, bad dog. All right, a better provision to this effect would have been after use of MUTS services has begun and user has provided student information, MUTS may only use student information for educational purposes in fulfillment of this agreement. So they've, they've constrained themselves here. This is tying into that direct control requirement of only using the data for the purpose or purposes for which it's being disclosed. So good dog provision would have had this very narrow data use provision for what they can do with the data. Data retention, preservation of student information. MUTS maintains the right to preserve and use student, inf student information after termination of this agreement. Okay, that's a very bad dog provision. Um, because it's the school's data, it's the student's data. Why should the vendor have the right to hold on to identifiable information when they're no longer serving as a school official? Better provision here would be, when student information is no longer needed for its specified purpose or upon termination of this agreement, all student information in the possession of MUTS and any of its subcontractors will be destroyed or returned to the district under the district's direction. Within 30 days of termination of an account, all student information associated with that account will be purged using NIST-approved data destruction and media sanitation methods for sensitive data. There are several really good things in here. The first is the commitment to destroy or return the data within 30 days of kind of cessation of use of the product or uh, on request. The second is that user accounts and anything will be purged from the system and that that purging will be done using established standards for data destruction and media sanitation. So they're being very specific here and this is certainly something to look for. Um, so this would be a good dog provision. Information sharing. Now, this is a very common one you see in terms of service. Uh, MUTs may share information with our subcontractors and business partners. Where feasible, MUTs will require third parties to comply with this agreement. Well, subcontractors can understand that, but the idea about where feasible will make them comply. Now remember, direct control. The school has to be able to establish direct control over anyone acting as a school official. 
That would include the vendor and any subcontractors that are providing services to the vendor. So there needs to be a mechanism for that direct control to cascade down the chain. Uh, so for starters, there needs to be a provision that allows the vendor to redisclose information to its subcontractors. And then there needs to be a provision that establishes that the vendor, when disclosing information to its subcontractors, will ensure that they meet those same requirements that the school has established through this terms of service. So this is a bad dog provision. Much better provision would be, you understand that MUTs will rely on one or more subcontractors to perform services under this agreement. It's fine to include subcontractor provisions, provided that you've laid them out like this. Uh, MUTs agrees to share the names of these subcontractors with you upon request. This is actually a great one because it means that the school can, if they, if they choose to, kind of audit how this is going on. They could get a list of any third party that's receiving student information. So a nice provision here. Um, and all subcontractors and successor entities will be subject to the terms of this agreement. This is also a great provision because it, it binds everybody down the chain, but it also, the successor entities is an important one because frequently we've seen situations where a vendor goes out of business and they sell their assets off and those assets may or may not include student information. So including provisions here guarantees that in that kind of ambiguous situation that companies often find themselves in if they're getting sold or bought, that the protections continue to the successor entities. License to student information. Providing information or user content grants months an irrevocable right to license, distribute, transmit, or publicly display student information or user content. I have seen a variant of this provision in so many terms of service agreements over the years. I am happy to say that it is getting less frequent that it's being included in education technology terms of service. You still see it from time to time, um, but this is really problematic because this essentially is granting them the right to use the information for whatever they want, for their own personal purposes, to redisclose it, et cetera. So this is very much a bad dog provision. Much better provision would be, Mutz has a limited license solely for the purpose of performing its obligations as outlined in this agreement. So that use restriction that we talked about earlier. This agreement does not give MUTs any rights implied or otherwise to student information, content, or intellectual property, except as expressly stated in this agreement. So they've, they've really constrained themselves here. They can use it for the purpose of providing the service, and that's about it. So a good dog provision. Provision on data collection suspiciously absent from Martin's terms of service agreement here. Uh, so they're very much a bad dog. Um, if he were having a good day, uh, he would have included a provision to the effect that Mutz will only collect student information necessary to fulfill its duties as outlined in this agreement. This means that they won't be secretly collecting and tracking all of this other additional data about students that may be unrelated to the service that's actually being provided. And you'd be surprised how frequently this actually happens. Data security, also suspiciously absent from this privacy policy. So another example of a bad dog provision in its absence. A good security provision would be to prevent unauthorized access, maintain data accuracy, and ensure the proper use of information. MUTS utilizes appropriate administrative, physical, and technical safeguards in accordance with industry best practices. MUTS also uses secure socket layer, protocol on your account information to protect student information. So there's a couple things here. Um, the first is you might think, oh, well, that seems kind of vague. Industry best practices, who establishes those? Well, this can be acceptable uh, because the technical standards for meeting data security, for example, can change fairly quickly. Industry best practices may seem vague but at least it's a commitment to kind of the, the administrative, physical, and technical safeguards. So they're, they're laying out the different layers of data security they're gonna be doing, and they're committing themselves to at least doing what is commonly done to protect the information. If they had written in a specific standard they were gonna follow, well, that standard may be obsolete by the time this user agreement ceases to have its validity. So, I could, I, could, I could live with this provision where they're, they're committing themselves to following industry best practices. Modification of the agreement. 
Mutz reserves the right to modify this agreement at any time. Notice will be posted to the service website if the changes are deemed by Mutz to be significant. Okay, this is a very bad dog provision for the reasons we've already discussed. Much better approach would be for essentially notice and consent. So Mutz will provide 60 days advance notice of any proposed changes to this agreement. Notice will be provided prominently on the Mutz service website and notification will be sent to the email address on file for all users registered with the service. Users who do not wish to consent to the new terms of service may terminate their Mutz accounts at any time by contacting Mutz. So they're doing two things here. They're providing, actually they're doing three things. They're providing a time period before which any changes will go into effect. They're providing general notice and they're providing targeted notice of those proposed changes. And that time period then allows the school or the district to decide if they don't want to accept those new changes and they can terminate the agreement. And remember, the data destruction provision said that within 30 days of termination, all of the data will be returned or purged. So provided the school is doing its due diligence here, they will have time after this notification to review everything, make a decision, and if they don't like the new terms of service, they can terminate and have the data be gone before these new provisions go into effect. So this is an excellent example of a very pro-privacy provision because it gives that advance notice and the opportunity to withdraw in an effective way. So if you're a vendor, how do your own company's terms of service compare with Martin's. Hopefully you're more on the good dog end of the spectrum. Uh, if you are a school or a district, use these as examples. Now it's not that any of the bad dog provisions would necessarily violate the law, um, but they raise red flags. They are things that you need to be concerned about. Um, every terms of service agreement is gonna be slightly different. You will likely never find ones that use these exact wordings, either on the good side or the bad side, but these are the types of things to look for. Uh, if you want to get more information about these, we have resources on our website uh, that provide additional uh, provision examples, both on the good side and the bad side to look at. Um, we also uh, have resources to help you if you want um, somebody to kind of go through your terms of service and provide some best practice recommendations.